Hello, and welcome to the 16-ounce canvas, the art of craft beer. My name is AJ Kearns. I am your host through this adventure. Thank you for taking the time to check us out. On this episode, episode two, we're featuring David Paul Seymour. He is a kick-ass rock and roll artist from the Minnesota area. And his portfolio is is killer. If you get a chance to DavidPaulSeymour.com, you can see all the great tour posters, album artwork. David's currently working on a full-length feature animated meta movie, which we'll talk to him about, called Planet of Doom. And we came to learn of David and connect with him through his work with the Burial Beer Company out of Asheville, North Carolina. Those cans, that look, that's David. And it's really great. I really enjoyed learning about the relationship David has with Burial, how that came to be. And what I'm growing to love about this process is learning about people's journey, their evolution, how they got here. I mean, I think one of the cool things that you'll learn is what David did in a previous life. Not in like a reincarnation kind of way. But anyway, here it is. David Paul Seymour, 16-ounce canvas podcast, episode two. Enjoy, my friends. I'm glad we're getting in touch. I, I, I appreciate the kind words and appreciate you, uh, you know, the interest in me and, and all that good stuff. So. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm based in Connecticut, and so I have some friends down in the Carolina area, and, you know, we trade some some brews back and forth, and I've been getting some more burial, you know, over time, and I really just, you know, the cans really popped out to me, and so I try to, you know, do my homework and figure out, you know, found your, your site, and, you know, I think your aesthetic is really unique, and, you know, it, it's just really interesting, so I just, I, I appreciate you making yourself available. Oh, no problem, man. Always, always uh, humbling to get, you know, these requests and uh, yeah, I'm down with it, man, for sure. Excellent. So just, just get at it. So, you know, how did you start, you know, getting into artwork? You know, my, my assumption, you know, seeming from your, your bio, you know, you're a eighties kind of you know punk and metal guy. And so I think, uh, you know, is it just, did it evolve from you know, your love of the music kind of just trying to, you know, get into it or what's your background, man? Um, yeah, I mean, more or less, um, you know, I, I, I was in some bands myself when I was younger and, and so, you know, being, being a a visual artist as well, you know, I started doing a lot of artwork for, um, you know, my, obviously my own bands, but, uh, you know, the bands around my local scene and, 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 you know, doing show flyers and cassette covers and, you know, seven inch record covers and that kind of thing. So, kind of got into it as a, te- as a, as a teenager. And, you know, we, we, uh, all of us guys in bands, we'd sit around trying to think of funky, cheap ways to make our own t-shirts and that kind of thing. So I was doing the artwork for that. And, um, you know, time went on, I got a, you know, my, my, you know, always had a love of art. I didn't go to school for art. My parents kind of drilled into me like, Oh, you know, artists don't make money. And so you need to, uh, you know, you need to, you need to come up with a better game plan, do something creatively that you can make money at. And, uh, so I settled on architecture. Actually, I had a love and passion for that. And that's actually what I went to school and got my degree in. And I did, uh, did that for about 20 plus years actually. And, um, you know, I, I somewhere along the line said, you know, I'm making a pretty good living here doing this stuff. Um, you know, I'd like to do some artwork for bands, you know, I'm not in bands anymore. Once I was, started having kids I got out of that and um you know so I just said hey you know I'm I'm gonna do something for fun on the side I know I'm not gonna make money you know because bands don't have any money to spend and, yeah you know and uh the, the funny thing is I was completely dead wrong because I wound up making eventually making my whole living out of it and that's what I'm doing today but um so it, it, it's really cool because I'm still you know a viable part of music scene uh the music that i like to listen to personally and uh yeah so you know i I got laid off in 2009 when the economy tanked and you know everybody else was getting laid off and all that and 
um, I started doing some freelance work and, you know, doing some illustration work for um, freelancing for Best Buy, Target, people like that. And, uh, yeah, I went pretty good. But, um, you know, that kind of even dried up. A lot of people I did work for for those companies got laid off or left. And, uh, you know, I, I did go back to work in architecture for a brief three-year period again. And, and uh, at that time, things continued to grow. And, and uh, you know, I was, I was – you know, just about doubling my income, just doing it, you know, a few hours a night at the dining room table. And when I got laid off the second time, my wife said, you know, I said, well, I guess I need to dust the resume off and and get my ass out there and find a new job. And, and, you know, surprisingly to me, my wife was like, you know, why, you know, this seems to be going really well. You know, why don't you just keep on doing it? I was like, fuck yeah. You know, so, you know, it was a surprise to me. Most wives, you know, guys' wives wouldn't be so supportive for things like that, especially when you got three kids. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I just, I just kept on going and I've been doing it now for a few years, just as a full-time gig. And it's really, uh, it's really paid off. I mean, I do really well and, you know, I'm fortunate that way, but I feel like I paid my dues and work to get there, you know? Right. I think that's, yeah, I think that that's, that's a great story and to your, you know, the, the hard work and, yeah, I think that I think parents are. Yeah, you know, I know how I, how I feel about my kids. You're kind of torn. It's like, okay, you want your kids to be happy, but you also want them to have a you know the lights on. But you know, you kind of able to do the best of both worlds. I think that's encouraging for others. You know, who kind of at that a lot of people get to that crossroad where you know it's it's really the time you have to put in ahead of time to to get to that point, and it's not always the the easiest. So that's that's amazing. I mean, that's really great to hear. Yeah. And I mean, and architecture in a way, you know, I mean, it's very artistic, you know, obviously you know, there's obviously some work that's probably not as, cre- you know, quote unquote creative as, as you might like, but of the, the corporate gigs, you know, that's a pretty good, you're creating something unique or, you know, a need for an area or community. Yeah, it's a very creative thing. As a matter of fact, I, you know, I'm originally from Mississippi and on the Gulf coast. And, and, uh, I got, I got accepted to the architecture school here in Minneapolis, <clears throat> Minnesota and, uh, where I live now. And, um, you know, it, it was the best thing that ever happened to me because, um, you know, most people have the conception of architecture as, you know, it's a very like suit tie, you know, profession and, and, uh, and, 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 you know, in some places it, it is that way, but, I was lucky enough to work for a bunch of guys who, you know, a uh, few firms who, you know, they, they, they were complete opposite of that. Very, very creative types. And when I went to school for architecture, it uh, really opened my mind up uh, to a lot more creativity than I could have ever had, had I, you know, just drew and, and, you know, did, did things as an actual artist. I mean, those guys operate on a very high level of creativity and thinking and, uh, you know, it instilled a lot of that in me. And then, you know, I, I recently did a, a thing at my son's school, you know, where they had me come in for this career day deal. And, and, I, and I talked to, uh, you know, all these kids and I was telling them that, you know, um, I'm an artist and, and I own my own business and I sit and I make my own time and, and, and I do my own thing. And I, I literally don't have anyone really telling me, you know, what to do and when to do it. And, um, uh, you know, that, that is not for everyone. It sounds great, but it, it takes a lot of discipline and a lot of business savvy mm-hmm. and a lot of, um, you know, good communication skills, good client skills and all that. And had I not been in architecture, I wouldn't have learned those things and I'd probably be an utter failure. It would never work. And that's why I see a lot of people who are in my industry who uh, don't make it because they don't, they, they didn't get that sort of uh, business side of things. And, you know, billing and clients and, and, and meetings and making people happy and <clears throat> not getting so emotionally invested in a project um, that you can't kind of take, you can't kind of step out of the bubble and, and say, hey, the, you know, this is what this person is saying and what they want, you know, I got to put everything that I want aside and, and uh, give them what they want, you know. So, you know, it, it trained me to take a lot of lumps, you know, I, I get bands and and even burial you know all the time saying oh i'm really sorry you know i hate to i hate to you know kill this 
this idea you have or the certain direction that you're wanting to go in, but we're not feeling it, you know, and there's a lot of artists who kind of get temperamental about that kind of response. And, um, you know, I just don't because that, that was so just drilled into my head to run counter to that. And, uh, you know, so, I mean, I, I, I it, you know, you're a product of your, life story, your biography, you know, and, and mine worked out really great for me in that way, because I, mm-hmm. I did learn all that business stuff, you know, and, and learned how to, uh, you know, work with people. So yeah, you know, it's, it is, mm-hmm. it is a good story for me. It definitely turned out really nice. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think what you said is great. Cause there's a lot of people who are good artists or good musicians. And if they, the, the, reality is there's a back you know a back end to it the business uh, and uh, uh i used to manage some bands and that was it i'm, I'm not a musician i mean I, I i play a you know i can play a mean cd player you know i did some radio but I, <laughs> I, yeah i couldn't you know i knew that that wasn't my calling but i came from the business background and so we had kind of a you know we both filled that gap for each other i was able to you know book the gigs and look at the routing and you know the you know what kind of up front we would get versus, you know, back end type of things. And, and it worked sure. out well because they were great musicians, but they couldn't, you know, they didn't have that business savvy to them and some, they didn't really want that. And that, I mean, that, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother discussion. But I think that you, what you're saying is exactly right. Not only do you have a great craft and that you, that you've mastered, but to being able to, you know, look at things from a deadline perspective and take, take feedback, you know, positively, you know, Obviously, mm-hmm. your, and you have your, you know, your your film, and you have your your show that you're, you know, that you do your radio program, and you know, so there you're able to kind of be judge and jury, but you know, for commissions and other type of work, you know, it has to be collaborative, and that's not always that's not always easy to do. Right, right. That's exactly right. Um, so, so tell me, you, you have you're working on a a film, and also you have some, you know, an animated short that that. I, you know, I was able to find and learn some more information about how did, what's the evolution for, you know, to that, that point. Um, you know, growing up, I, I, you know, I had this kind of bucket list in my head, I guess, of things that I always kind of wanted to do, uh, you know, whether they were successful or not, there were things I wanted to try. And, um, you know, <laughs> being a DJ for a radio show was one, and, uh, and, you know, so check that off. And then, you know, I grew up as a big cartoon kid, big Saturday morning cartoon kid, and always wanted to pair the art, you know, that I was doing with, uh, that kind of project. And, and, uh, you know, I met, um, uh, my Riff Lodge animation partner, Tim Granda, um, who's out of Michigan. I met, I met him several years ago. Um, he does interviews with, artists that he likes, uh, for a site called doom cycle. And, um, he asked me to enter, you know, for an interview, we did it. And, uh, you know, we, we, we did wind up doing a little animated thing that he did for the promo, the interview, like he does did in those days for, for all his interviews. And, uh, we had a good time doing that. And then I, I don't know, it's kind of somewhere in that you know, in that time frame, we, we, we were talking one day and, and we were talking about, um, you know, his skills in animating and, and my skills at drawing. And, and, uh, we were talking about <clears throat> the classic film, heavy metal, you know, um, from the eighties and how much we loved it. And uh, as kids growing up and, and how we'd love to do something like that. And I told him, well, you know, I got, I got an actual, this story, this treatment that I wrote for a story, um, that I did a couple years prior to that. And I uh, said, man, I think it'd be a great fit to do, you know, full length thing. We kind of, you know, laugh, aha, you know, that'd be, that'd be cool if we could do it, but I don't know. And I said, well, you know, the idea was, well, you know, pairing animation and art with uh, heavy music. And I said, well, you know, I'm friends with all these bands. I work for all these bands. Let me reach out and see if anyone's interested. And, you know, we were kind of like, well, you know, if someone's interested, that'd be cool. And, and, uh, you know, I, everyone I asked was like, just, Oh God. Yeah. You know, and that we'd love to be a part of that, you know? And then obviously I knew, you know, we couldn't, I couldn't do all the drawing myself for a feature length film. So, um, you know, and, and I really didn't want to, we wanted to have this kind of mixed chapter by chapter kind of 
uh, change of both music and visuals. So I reached out to a bunch of artists and just everyone we reached out to from, from the talent to the sponsors to, you know, our recent Kickstarter success. I mean, it's just been that it's been just a monster success, you know, um, everyone just instantly got it and everyone just instantly saw its potential, um, you know, for success. And, and so far it's been that. So we're, um, still like in, you know, kind of pre-production mode. Um, we're actually still, uh, you know, trying to rope, uh, the, the rest of some of the bands into, uh, completing their music so that the artists can get started. And so we've got some songs in the can, um, you know, probably about three quarters of them. Um, and you know, the artists who are paired with those bands chapters are off and running, uh, doing the artwork now. And, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a lengthy process. I mean, my, my role, uh, other than being the, the writer of, of the film is being the, you know, art and creative director for the film. So I kind of deal with the bands and the artists on a day-to-day basis while my partner, Tim Granda is, uh, the animator and director of the film. And, uh, so he's kind of busy off actually making the film and I'm busy, you know, you know, being the, uh, the animal handler for, (laughs) for all the talent. So, um, you know, that's, that's kind of how that is. I'm also an artist on one of the chapters, but you know, that's a pretty small role in consideration of my bigger roles, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I mean, so it's called the planet of doom and it's going to be probably about an hour and 15, 20 minute feature length animated film um you know and we're planning on going as big as we can with it it's not going to be just some dvds we hawk around it's it's uh you know we've got some interest in doing uh film festivals and uh kind of like you know comic-con type Mm -hmm. things and uh you know we're going to uh you know go go all the way with it distribution just anything you you know uh you know independent theater screenings everything you could imagine from a I guess an independently produced film. So you know, we're really excited about it. And, and like I said, it, the response has been overwhelming and, and I think it's going to be a big thing. That's great. I mean, it just seems like you keep, yeah, that, I, I like to know what else is on that, that bucket list. Cause you keep uh, kind of going for it and it seems to be coming up uh, aces pretty greatly. So that's pretty, that's really great to hear. And I think what you're saying before about the business aspect sounds like, you know, as well as being, you know, being an artist on the project, you get to herd the cat, so to speak. So I think that puts that to, to good use, trying to get everybody on their their timelines and, and you know, working together. So it yeah. seems like it's just kind yeah. of an, a building process. Yeah, yeah, and it's been it's it's been a complex one, but it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I've never managed so much stuff in my life. Um, all the way around, you know, but even the just getting into the, the you know the zooming in on just the film. I mean, there's a lot obviously to manage there too. So, um, yeah, I feel like uh, the guy with the spinning plates. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing it so far, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I used to, I used to just get involved with way too much stuff and, and, and it would just be kind of a failure because, you know, there, it was just too much and too varied. Um, you know, I've kept it pretty, pretty tight. So, uh, you know, I mean, I, I'm a, you know, three legs of a table, you know, so I got, you know, the art I do, the movie and the radio show and, and, and that's really it. And, and honestly, I've pretty much checked off my bucket list. I'm pretty, I'm pretty content. So, you know, I spend, um, the rest of my time with my wife and kids and, you know, uh, I had, <clears throat> I had somebody I knew asked me one time, and you know, not that long ago, they were they were saying they were talking about their hobbies and and whatnot, and getting into this and that, and you know, they were yeah, talking about that, and um, I said, well, I'm actually pretty good. I mean, I actually get to make my living doing my hobbies. So you know, when I'm done for the day, man, I, I you know, I like to go outside and and enjoy the outdoors, or just you know, put my feet up with a beer and enjoy the company of my wife. And, you know, and go outside with my kids and, you know, so, uh, and also I'm, I'm lucky somehow I, I'm able to do all this shit and still knock off at four o'clock every day and have the weekends off. I very rarely have to really put in any, you know, uh, extra time on that. And so, um, I guess I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've tried to, yeah. It sounds like, uh, yeah. 
that sounds pretty pretty great to me. So I definitely, you know, the fact that what you do, what you call quote unquote work, is something that you love. I think that that's something that a lot of people, you know, might be a little envious of. But I think I think that's inspiring, especially for especially in this day and age. I mean, I think now is no better time to be an independent, you know, artist or you know whatever that is, whatever that medium is than you know. 20 years ago, I think, you know, just distribution and accessibility and, you know, so, social, I think it's really now more than ever, it really allows people to take some more chances and not have to be constricted to the traditional, you know, outputs. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, you know, that's exactly what it is. I mean, we live in a time now where it's possible, you know, with, um, you know, I, I wouldn't be sitting where I was if this was even 10 years ago, you know, and, um, so, you know, everything played out exactly right for me. Uh, going back again to that uh, career day thing, I was telling those kids, that, you know, honestly, like um, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be even a creative type of job. There's so many freelancing or consulting opportunities for almost any field that you want to go in. You got to have that discipline and you got to have that self-management. You got to know how to run a business to pull it off and, um, there's not many, well, honestly, not really many people who, who, uh, are wired to do it. Um, at least without training of some kind. So I told them all, you know, th- you know, I, I, even if you want to do that, I recommend go, go do go work for somebody and work for them for five years, minimum 10, maybe even, you know, then go off on your own and do your own thing. Cause you'll be well equipped, you know? Right. Cause I, yeah, yeah, I think a process and I think that, you know, how you see things, you know, to, to say what you like and dislike, you know, if you just kind of, if you have a blank slate, then it's hard to have a comparison point to, you know, what's best or what you like and don't like some folks, you know, I had a period of time working from home and it was initially, it was really good, but over time it just, be, you know, it was, there was something there, there was an interaction, you know, that was, that was missing. So I had to really make myself be, you know, leave the house more and try to be more in front of people for that collaboration. And you know, not all the time, but you kind of, I learned, you know, my thresholds, you know, I probably can do three days a week and two, you know, and two, you know, in an office or in a more, mm-hmm. you know, collaborative setting. So I, I definitely agree. And we are back. You just heard part one of the David Paul Seymour interview right here on the 16 ounce canvas. The Art of Craft Beer podcast. Great interview so far with David. Really love his perspective, his business advice, and just his just his mission, what he's doing. Put his mind to it. Took some chances. Supportive wife. Just a great story. Work hard, play hard, and do something you love. That is the end goal, and he is kicking ass and even taking a few names. So really excited we got able to talk to David. He and I had never really spoken before, just a few correspondents over email, and I think that we really connected. Love what David's doing with his bucket list. I think the bucket's empty at this point. He's really crushing it. But what I really liked in speaking with him was just his overall insight and feedback. And I think one of the cool things from a music standpoint is I'm not a metal guy. Just not my thing, or I thought... But in exploring what David's doing, trying to get into the mind of the artist and learn more about him, really took an effort to look at some of the bands that he was working with, check out their music, and just really digging a lot of the stuff that we're hearing. We're featuring some of those artists now. We have Hel Camino, Womat, and before, before meeting up with David, I had no idea who the hell those guys were. So that's a great, another, another great takeaway. But you're listening to 16 Ounce Canvas. We're going to get right back into part two. Remember, you check us out online, 16ozcanvas.com. David Paul Seymour, part two, right here. Enjoy. So how does a guy in, you know, Minnesota come to team up with, you know, burial down in, in Carolina, North Carolina? Um, the guy who does, he's like their head brewmaster, uh, Tim Gormley. He, um, he is into heavy music and some, somewhere along the line started following me on social media. <clears throat> and one day 
it was just like this flurry of activity. You know, he commented on something I posted and tagged in the other two from the brewery, the, the other, you know, two owners, Jess and Doug, and said, this is the guy I was telling you about. And, uh, you know, um, you get a lot of comments and things, you know, when you, when you get to where I'm at, where, you know, sometimes it, it just escapes your radar, but somehow I was like, well, what's, what's that? I just happened to pick up on it and looked at them and realized that, you know, they were with a, a brewery and probably within the same day, I got either an email or a phone call or, or something from those guys. And, um, you know, they, they wanted to go for it. And, um, you know, I, I tell people, um, probably the, and, and this is part of the answer to, to your question. Uh, you know, I, I tell people that, uh, I, I'm really proud of being a part of burial and, and, and their kind of unfolding of their legacy and history, because, you know, those guys were strictly just a tap room. Uh, when they first came around and, and when we got together, they said, look, you know, we're, we, we, you know, we got a loan. We're, we're looking to expand our operation. We're going to start canning and bottling our beer. And, uh, you know, we feel really confident about where we're going. And, you know, I got on board with the, you know, it's one thing to come along or get picked up or, or whatever um, by somebody who's already established and kind of has, you know, uh, something going that is recognizable, i.e. a brand, you know, <clears throat> in the public eye. And, and then you got to fall into that. And uh, hopefully it's a good fit um, for us and our relationship. It was exactly at a time where these guys were just about to take that turn on the flight of stairs and go up a whole nother level. And, you know, I, I came along at a time where I'm proud that I really helped them to define what the look of burial beer is. And, uh, you know, I help them with, you know, not just, Hey, here's cool art for the can. Here's your check. Thank you. We'll be in touch for the next one. You know, it's, it's been so much of a collaborative team family spirit kind of thing since day one. And, you know, we worked together to, you know, establish what burials brand looks like. And I'm so proud of that. And, and I, I gotta tell you, I get so much, I mean, every day, literally, you know, I get people either, you know, reaching out on social media or what have you and say, God, we love the artwork. We've never seen anything like this on a beer before. And, uh, you know, it, it, it just feels great because I feel like Hey, I'm not going to lie. If you've tasted it, you know, but the, their beer is, it, it, it is flawless. And, uh, you know, even certain styles of beer that they do that say my wife or I don't care for, uh, historically we've tried and it's just been, wow, this is good. This is actually really good. You know, everything they do as, as just, you know, my seal of approval personally. And so do couple something that's already a tasty product with what I feel like is pretty revolutionary stuff on the can is just a great, you know, that's a great thing to be a part of. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm truly blessed that those guys came along and found me when they did and I found them and it's just been such a great partnership, but that is how, um, we got together and, and that's how kind of things have gone over the last few years that have, you know, been with them. That's that's a great story. I think again, it shows the power of of social and just people reaching out and collaboration. Now, that the the first what was the first can? Do you remember what the first can or label was probably, that you did for them was? Uh, it, it would have to be either the Scythe Rye Pale Ale uh, or the um, or was that an IPA? Well, anyway, the Scythe was it was either that one or the skillet uh donut stout it was one of those two for sure and did you try did you have you had you tried the beer before you done the artwork i had not i had not and uh i'll be honest i still still haven't tried all their beers and uh you know it, it with 
with their distribution not reaching me, um, you know, it's 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 tough for them. It's a it's and it's a weird business thing to keep me flush with their their product, you know. Um, which <laughs> I drink. I drink a lot. That's it. That's. I wish I <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's. I think they're probably happy that you're in Minnesota, right? Otherwise, you'd be you'd be coming by and yeah, you know, having all of them. But oh, I'd be f***ing them for free beer all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But, uh, <laughs> your wife's on. probably have your wife's probably have about that too. Like, hon, I worked out a deal. I get a couple cases every, but this is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My wife is a is an avid uh, beer drinker with me as well. We we actually. Had not- I'm lucky. I'm lucky with this woman. I'm telling you, but uh, she she enjoys it too, and we we have a lot of fun trying different beers, and you know, we're, uh, get a little geeky about it, but uh, we we enjoy it. You know, I'm not as snobby as most, but uh, you know, I, I yeah, we like we like trying different things and 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 all that. But to answer your question, no, I, I hadn't tried it uh, before I started drawing it. It actually didn't come till a good bit later that actually, you know, got my lips around some of their beer, but, uh, I've, I've had several and, and man, I've, I've never been disappointed. It's, it's been great, but, um, yeah. Now from a a process standpoint, how, how does that work with the brewery? Is it they have, they're just, they, they, they give you notice on a, a beer that's coming out. Do you work on the name for the beer? How, because how is that process? Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess a typical, a typical, um, you know, project for, for those guys would be, you know, they, we, we're at the point now where, where we, we, we have kind of a one or two month calendar rolling at all times. Um, it used to be a little more hit or miss in the early days, just because, you know, the, those guys were really getting up and running. Now they're just at a full head of steam. So um, pretty much every week I get a brief from those guys, like on a Monday or Tuesday and things move pretty quick. Um, you know, I know it's already on my calendar, but I don't have the brief. I don't really have the, you know, the, the art direction, so to speak uh, until the week of, and, you know, an email will come across my desk and, and uh, you know, it'll, it'll say, you know, okay, it's this beer. This is the name. This is all the, you know, stats and, you know, this is, this is the style. And, and then they give me the art direction and, and, and that's man, it, it, from week to week, it could be the art direction is, um, we have, we have zero idea, (laughs) go for it, you know? And some weeks it'll be, you know, we, we got such a strong, vision um you know here's here's our idea uh and sometimes um you know jess and doug uh the owners they're a married couple and they are huge into sort of um medieval era i guess it is i don't i don't i don't know when you know people like bosch and and all those classic painters were were around doing their thing i kind of I'm actually the most ignorant artist as far as other artists and art, but, uh, you know, um, they, they, they're really into that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, they, they'll, they'll even reference sometimes, uh, a painting or the name of the beer is even based off the name of one of those, uh, classic paintings and, and they'll send it to me and, and, and I, uh, the riff, the idea then is to riff off that painting. So that's one way. You know, like I said, it, it'll be either, you know, no idea at all from them or a really heavy idea from them, maybe something in the, in between, you know, loose idea, but open interpret. It's always up to my interpretation, um, you know, or it's, it's you know, hey, we're going to do another kind of riff on a, on a classic painting. Uh, usually those are for the, uh, the bomber bottles, the single label thing, and, um, you know, and it just kind of goes from there. I start, I dive in, I start, you know, gathering reference materials and, and, and sketching. And then I send that, those sketches over to them. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's a slam dunk, you know, and it's like, go ahead, go for it. It's fully approved. And sometimes it's, you know, close, but we need to make some tweaks, you know, like any other 
create a process. And so it's like that. And, uh, you know, by the time I get that Intel in my inbox Monday or Tuesday, uh, we're wrapped up, done, and they got a file for me that literally could go right to the cans by the end of the week, you know, this time on Friday. I actually just finished something up for them yesterday. Um, that's all, you know, that's already done this week. So it, it goes like that and it moves really fast. And, um, you know, the turnaround on, on it is incredible, uh, at least, at least for me. And, um, you know, so it's a very quick creative process and then execution is also pretty quick. And, uh, yeah. And, um, you know, part of that too, the concepts, um, you know, burial in their, not only our aesthetic, but their kind of, um, I guess, thematic philosophy, if you want to call it, you know, is about sort of life and death, dark and light, good and evil, um, yin and yang kind of thing. And that was something very, from the very beginning, we came up with this cool idea to, to uh, do two actual individual pieces of, of artwork for each can, Um for their um, 16 and 12 ounce cans where um, you've got on one side, we call it the dark side and one side we call it the light side. So with any given beer, any given theme, you've got those two um, yin and yang pieces. And, you know, so my part of my job is to not only come up with a piece of art, but to, to come up with two and have those be counter to each other. And, uh, you know, if you look at any of the cans with the two art on, you know, either side, that's that's the thought process going into that week or, you know, that that uh, particular can. And so, um, yeah, it, it, you know, we, we did that from day one. And, and that's kind of been a really fun way to approach each can each time. Um, yeah. Yeah, that that takes like three of my next questions. Yeah, because that was really the, I, I definitely noticed the the duality of it, the kind of the two pieces. You know, especially when it wraps. You know, the front and the back are the. It's kind of almost where does it start and where does it end? Where's the beginning type thing? And uh-huh. it's yeah, I, I I think it has a very mythical you know aspect to it with the imagery and you know it's very apparent the you know the themes of life and death with the the skeletons you know, the skulls, uh, and, you know, has that, that throwback to, you know, with, with the swords and, uh, you know, and that, so it's, that's, it's just great to hear you you describe it much better than I would be able to. So I do appreciate you. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I've always, I've been wondering about that. Like I said, there's some, I don't get as many of their, of their cans. I'm always checking out what they're doing online and just to, to, to see some of the work. It was definitely, it was great to be able to track you down and try to learn more about your process. Um, now one, one other question, which I, I, I was curious about recently, you know, burial did some collaboration with other half and how, how is that process? Is, is there kind of somebody who gets the, does, is it a shared art direction or is it just a hybrid approach? How, how is that working with another artist? Um, the collaborations that we've done, um, we've actually been getting into more of those with uh, several other breweries. Um, and uh, I'd say, you know, in the late last you know, quarter of last year and into now, it seems like almost every other or every few projects are for a collaboration with another brewery. And those have been a lot of fun because um, we sort of step outside of our box a, a lot, um, you know, and, and we kind of keep what we call the burial look um, distinctive from the collaborative cans. And um, although it's, it's me doing the artwork, it's still, um, you know, a different feel to it, a different approach to it. And, um, usually the collaborations that we do, what I would call the burial. And I, and actually, I don't know. And I don't think, I don't, I don't know any way that, uh, recent collaborations have been done by any other artist but me. It seems like usually when burial, um, gets, 
you know, gets on one of these or whatever, they kind of take the lead. But I think, you know, there's probably a couple others out there with um, the other breweries that have maybe been done by somebody else. But it's, it's, as far as process goes, it, it's, it's still very similar to, to what we do when we're doing our own thing. But um, like I said, that, that the designing part and the themes and the outcome is usually pretty different uh, than, than what we do for our regular thing. And usually we don't, we don't do the two sides. We just do the one piece of art and um, like for diamond mausoleum. And um, we did one with, uh, well, and then the other one, again, we did with them for, uh, for the left my wallet. <clears throat> I don't know if you've seen that one, but um, yeah, usually it's just the one side, but the process I would say is very similar. I mean, it, the, the info still comes across my desk on Monday or Tuesday and, you know, I, I sketch up what I think is a good idea and we tag along it and then, and then it, it gets, done. um, the only difference there usually is that, uh, you know, those guys that obviously kind of bring the other brewer in on it during the sketching phase for input or, you know, approval. And then they, yeah, so it's kind of like a two-part approval versus you just them, you know. But uh, I'd say otherwise, it's, it's pretty much the same, it's, you know. But, it, you know, it it allows us, like, you know, we do we do more fun with things with the uh, the – the title of the beer on the, on the packaging instead of, you know, our, our stuff traditionally, it all has that sort of scrolly ribbon work with the, uh, with the title on it. Whereas, you know, when we're doing a collaboration with, with somebody else, we don't use the ribbon at all. And, you know, kind of geeky little, uh, you know, imperceptible things like that, that most people probably aren't, I don't know, maybe they are, you know, paying attention to, but, um, yeah, I mean it's pretty similar, I guess, but similar but different. <laughs> no, it's great, and I, yeah, I, I like that. There's very you know burial specific things, like you're saying, like they're subtle, but that's it's at the end of the day, it's it's really great branding, you know, to have that consistency, but then be unique across the different beers. So I, I like that with the collaborations that you bring some of it, some of it, but it's not. A true, you know, it's not just a burial only, you know, can or bottle. So that's that's really smart. Yeah. All right. Well, in my former life, I was a, a DJ, so I did some radio work. What's the? I mean, I can't I can't say that we could go we could riff on you know metal bands, but what what are the metal bands your go tos or what are you listening to when you're creating? When I'm creating the artwork, um, is that what you are mean? You, yeah, you like a music while you're working guy, or do you kind of have like a... Oh, get- yeah. No, I can't. My wife, it drives her nuts a few times when she's when she's here and I'm working, because I, I, can't, I can't do any... I can't even wash dishes in the kitchen without music. I mean, I, I'm pretty much 24-7 music if I can get away with it. Usually when I'm, <clears throat> when I'm working on a, on a project for work, I uh, usually try to obviously listen to whoever it is that I'm drawing for um it's a little harder to do now with the radio show because i'm basically spend my entire you know eight or nine hours of work day uh you know trolling the internet and such for for new music i mean my the uh big thing with my show is that it's uh it's all about the newest and freshest you know heavy music that's coming out around the globe and so, you know, I, I, you know, I'm not playing Motley Crue and Slayer and stuff like that. And I, and I, and I have a tendency to really pay more attention to very independent or smaller bands, I guess, you know, I'm not playing Metallica on there or whatever, you know, and, you know, even if they come out with a new album, I'm not really picking up on that. I'm, I'm really kind of, you know, I think people like the show because, you know, they're like every week they tune in, they're, they're hearing something probably a good bit of something that they they've never heard before or ever even heard of that band before. So, you know, I'm, I'm serving, I, I hope as a conduit for these independent bands 
a lot of them who I do work for <clears throat> to uh, get, you know, get in other people's faces. And so, um, yeah, usually when I'm working, I'm, I'm listening to just all kind of new stuff. I mean, um, the newer, the better. And, and, you know, I kind of spend Monday through Wednesday, just combing the internet while I work, just listening to tunes. And then I got a, like a log book I keep where I just kind of, Oh yeah, that's a killer tune. And I write down, you know, that and keep that. And then Thursday I plug in a playlist and Friday, like today, just before you called, I taped the episode for Sunday. And uh, it's kind of how it works. And then the rest of the time, I'm just listening to whatever, you know, whatever I want. I listen to a couple of friends' podcasts and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But it's kind of it's kind of got me out of being that 43-year-old guy who's, still sitting around listening to the same shit he listened to when he was a teenager or in his twenties or whatever, you know, like everybody I know, you know, and I get people over to the house all the time and we get talking about the radio show and, you know, we'll inevitably wind up shooting pools and drinking beer and, you know, we'll, we'll put on Pandora and it's cycling through all this old, old stuff. And, and they're like, Oh man, it is so heavenly. I just don't make anything like this anymore, you know, and like, oh, I wish they still had bands this good. I'm like, dude, <laughs> you're a fucking idiot, man, you know. <laughs> you know, I kind of razz them, you know. I'm like, dude, you need to you need to check out the show because they're they're they're. I, I literally I could do I could do probably an eight hour show a week and and not you know I've got such a a mountain of of songs that you know it, it kills me every week to have to choose, you know. There's that much. Good stuff. I mean, we live in a time right now where, like you know, you were talking about the social media and, and the internet and its and its repercussions today. It's like, man. I mean, it, there's so much good music out there, and uh, you know, you don't you don't have actual radio or MTV or you know um, those kind of even major label push, you know, PR or whatever covering these guys, you know, covering any anything really. I mean, it's so genre. Uh, niched, you know, and everybody's got their niche and that's what they're into and that's what they listen to. And it's kind of a beautiful thing because you don't, you don't really have to, you know, sit through crap you don't like to get to the stuff you do. And, and you don't have to rely on, you know, the old, you know, somebody else selecting your playlist anymore. You know, you can, you can find this stuff in uh, a thousand different places and, and it, and it's kind of cool, but it's given these guys who are, you know, small guys or even medium sized guys, an opportunity to just kind of be all over the place. And, and, uh, I, I think it's a great time to be a fan of music, uh, whatever the genre is, you know? Yeah, I agree. I- there's always a way to get it out there. I mean, and I think even just simply technology, which, you know, you and I c- can remember the days of dial up, you know, just having bandwidth, you know, the idea that, you know, when I was in college, I, I would go to class all day and I'd queue up a couple of songs to download and hope that the site was reputable and it wasn't some, you know, shitty version of it. And I'd come back, you know, six hours later and have two songs that were three minutes to listen to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or making a mixtape, you know, or making a mixtape, which our kids will think we're crazy. You know, listening to the radio, hoping that you have a blank tape ready to go at that moment to record that one song that you wanted to hear. And so, yeah, it's, even just logistically, it's pretty amazing. It is. It is. Hey, I got to preface this. Well, I, I gotta, I gotta say real quick that uh, the FedEx guy just pulled up, and just so if you hear my dog start going nuts, it's uh, all right. It's, yeah, I just wanted to now just kind of conclude where where can folks check out your your show where where would they hear that uh it, it stream every every new episode streams uh live uh on sundays um at 1 p.m 9 p.m and 11 p.m eastern standard time on trendkillradio.com and uh then you can find uh, all the episodes as podcasts um archived at mixcloud.com slash sonic temple so the the show's called sonic temple excellent well good well good man you have a great weekend and uh yeah keep doing what you're doing like i said it's it's really impressive and inspiring and it's it's really killer so thanks hey man i really appreciate that thank you so much and you have a good weekend too 
All right, brother. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Dave. All right, man. Thank you. Bye-bye. There you have it. David Paul Seymour. Make sure you check out his website. There it is, davidpaulseymour.com. Also, you can see a lot of the artwork that he's doing. David Paul Seymour on the Instagram. One thing I love about that is really good to see the progression of some of the art. Early sketches. What some might call the ideation phase. And it's really great to see the progression on there. And Dave is just doing a lot of shit. So make sure to check him out. Send some love our way. Really great opportunity to talk to him. And like I said, I think it's a great story. So hopefully you enjoyed it too. You're listening to the 16 ounce canvas, the art of craft beer. Episode two is in the books. Tell your friends. Episode three, we've got Luke Snowback coming to you from Spiteful Brewing. Chicago, Illinois. If you have a chance to check them out, we'll give you a little sneak preview. Remember, check us out on the web, 16ozcanvas.com. Throw up the 16OZ canvas on the old Instagrammer. And let us know what you think. We're growing. One episode at a time. Cheers, my friends. And now for a sneak preview of episode three, featuring Luke Snowbeck, art director for Spiteful Brewing, based out of Chicago, Illinois. Are you Lunch Beer Luke? I have to assume so, unless you have multiple Lukes at the the brewery. I am, yes. The one and only. I used to have a beer at lunch pretty much every day, but I slowed that down. Yeah, you're you have yeah, and your lunch beer Luke is a double IPA, which is you know, that's a pretty uh, it's a good good lunch commitment right there. <laughs> that is yes, only one of those at lunch. <laughs> yeah, only <laughs> lunch. Yeah, exactly. Now, it, yeah that that would be that would be hard for me. Is I think working at the brewery and all, especially the all the new beers. You want to try it and see what what that tastes like, and then you, know, you have your your favorites. Is there a favorite? You know that that. You know your favorite spiteful or your your, your top you know, that you're excited when that comes back around. Um, I really like our the beers that we put out in the six packs, the Alley Time and the Spiteful IPA, because they're they're more crushable. You can you know drink them all day long. Tonight's episode featured music from Wofat, Hell Camino, and Shadow Witch.